It's probably blasphemous for me to do a video about orange juice before lemonade, but whatever. Recently, a video came up in my recommended called The Orange Juice Paradox. I watch a lot of video essays, such as the one you're watching now, but they're mostly from channels like H Bomber Guy, Shea Frillos, and other long-form essays about video games, movies, and random political topics I don't care about. I thought the algorithm had just found a random video essay for me. Well, as it turns out, the video in my recommended was not a video essay. Instead, it was a short sketch from the 2000 sitcom Malcolm in the Middle. Side note, finding what show this was from wasn't exactly easy. I never watched Malcolm in the Middle, and all the comments said was Heisenberg, which led me to a German physicist. Anyway, the sketch started, and I was expecting the actual essay portion of the video to start after the sketch. Suffice to say, that didn't happen. What is this elusive paradox, then? Well, I'll be spoiling the punchline of the sketch in a very boring way, so if you want to laugh, go watch it now. I'm not going to play any of it here for fear of copyright. For those of you who don't have a sense of humor, basically Hal, the father, tells his son to not drink so much orange juice as they need to save money. He goes on to say that Stuff doesn't grow on- Wait, it does! So why is it so damn expensive? So why is it so expensive then? To know the answer to that, we should probably figure out why orange juice became so popular in the first place. I can't find any solid sources for my findings, as no article in existence thinks citing their sources is a good idea, but I did my best to verify everything I'm saying. Links to my sources in the description if you care. The orange market in the early 1900s was super saturated, and farmers were selling at a loss, so a business known as Lord & Thomas acquired an orange growing company known as Sunkissed Growers Inc. You probably know them today for their orange juice. During this time, farmers were going so far as to chop down trees to limit supply. Albert Lasker, one of the fathers of modern day advertising, was working on an ad campaign for Sunkiss to increase orange consumption. One of his more lucrative campaigns in the field was the Drink an Orange campaign. It's an understatement to say that the campaign overstated OJ's healthfulness. Orange juice, a delicious beverage, is healthfulness itself. California orange juice is rich in flavor and bouquet. Have you a tendency to overeat? Orange juice provides an aid to digestion that counteracts the ill effects of the heavy meal. California orange juice is advised by thousands of physicians for the tiniest babies as well as for grown-ups. It provides a needed food value and aids in the proper assimilation of food. In short, the fresh, pure, live juice of good oranges, which comes to you in nature's germ-proof package, is a natural regulator that every mother and wife should be careful to serve the whole family at every meal. Why forgo for even a single day the natural liquid food that makes all other foods more healthful? Keep in mind that the amount of orange juice per person took about 2-3 to three oranges, and the ad for the Sunkissed Orange Juice Extractor was conveniently placed right next to the one for orange juice. Despite how completely false the majority of the ad is, it's pretty convincing, no? Granted, there are some health benefits in the juice, but mostly in the pulp, and not nearly as much of a miracle food as stated in the ad. Lasker was able to increase the amount of consumption so much that farmers stopped cutting down trees, which is pretty good for the environment, except carbon emissions from transportation, but we'll ignore that for now. Natural fresh squeezed orange juice isn't really the orange we all know and love. What the heck did I write in the script? Natural orange juice isn't really the orange juice we all know and love today, is it? We like the concentrated sweet orange juice. You can thank the soldiers in World War II for that one. Well, kind of. Vitamin C was grossly under-consumed up until the mid-20th century. The soldiers were issued small vitamin C-packed lemon crystals. Sounds great, right? Lemons are the best. Not according to the soldiers. I have a personal grudge against their taste in fruit. This caused the government to search for a good alternative, which led them towards orange juice. Cedric Donald Atkins, Edward L. Moore, and Lewis Gardner McDowell were all tasked with this task. They did not find the solution in time for the war, but their efforts were not wasted. They came up with removing the liquid from the juice via heating, adding some non-concentrated juice back in, then freezing the whole thing. Adding back some normal orange juice helped bring back flavor and lost vitamin C. Consumers flocked to this concentrated orange juice. It was affordable, which is odd considering the context we're in, but we'll get to that. Tasty and convenient, and very rich in vitamin C. It even became the official beverage of Florida. In the 1980s, we got something much closer to what we have today, known as reconstituted, ready-to-serve orange juice. Now we're getting somewhere. The reconstitution and concentration is where the cost comes from, right? 
Well, it would make sense that reconstituted orange juice would cost more than frozen concentrate, as they do the reconstitution for you. Well, for a 12 fluid ounce can of frozen concentrate from Minute Maid, it would cost you around $3, assuming you don't have sales tax. You can expect 60 fluid ounces of reconstituted orange juice for around 50 cents more. So what gives? Why is a concentrate so much more expensive? Well, what about natural orange juice? They don't have to heat it for you or anything. Just squeeze the orange and maybe filter out the pulp. Well, as it turns out, it's almost exactly the same price. I guess we need to figure out what makes it expensive in the first place. Most orange juice, regardless of whether or not it's from concentrate, will have additives. These additives most likely add to the price. Additives include certain acids to get more juice out of every orange, extra vitamin C, vitamin D, calcium, and parts of the orange peel to add back flavor and smell. Acid can even be removed if you're sensitive to acid. So that probably means natural orange juice with no additives costs less. Well, it costs more, for some reason. Even more than not from concentrate juice with additives. Honestly, the economy is probably just screwed up. And they know that they can charge more for the juice because supply and demand, blah blah blah. Great, now I have to look into economics, the one class I skipped in my senior year because of the virus, all because of one random clip from a sitcom I saw on YouTube. Supply and demand is pretty simple. I imagine you know the basics. If not, the more people want something, the more it costs, and vice versa. Of course, the popularity of orange juice went up as it became more liked through ad campaigns. Add inflation on top of that, and we're getting close to our answer. Natural orange juice costs even more than concentrated orange juice because fewer companies sell it and enough people want it that they'll fork over the money. It's almost the opposite of the problem the orange companies had a century ago. Not quite, actually. Orange juice consumption is dropping pretty fast. It's been dropping faster and faster since the 1980s. There's a fancy thing called price elasticity, basically another part of supply and demand. Orange juice's price elasticity is 0.77 which means for every 10% increase in price, consumption goes down by just over 7%. However, because of the losses companies have already suffered, price isn't going down with demand. It's staying around the same. That spike you see in the graph uh, happened before too, it's not just a one-time thing. Honestly, it seems like orange juice prices are weird because the companies that make orange juice don't understand basic economic principles. On top of the fact that the actual health benefits of orange juice have been exposed since those ad campaigns and they're not exactly stellar. Hey, thanks for watching this. Uh, this was my first video essay ever. Not the first I've ever written, but the first I've actually made. Uh, I was bored and I wrote up the essay in like an hour, an hour and a half. Surprisingly difficult to find information about orange juice out on the internet. Uh, most of my sources are Wikipedia, so you can get mad at me for that. But whatever. I intend to make more video essays, so hopefully you show up for those. Not about orange juice. I might make one about lemonade, actually. That sounds fun. But they'll probably be about video games. I have one about Dark Souls that I want to make. Uh, I also have more video game videos in the works. Um, like what's traditional on my channel. I honestly don't know what my plan is for this channel at this point. I guess it's just stuff that won't fit on AA batteries, like video essays about orange juice. Um, I just spent an hour of my own time after graduating writing an essay about orange juice. I don't know how to end this.